Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today we're talking about the Lucas Supply Function. The Lucas Supply Function is a large part of some New Keynesian economic models, such as the Fisher model, the Calvo model, and the New Keynesian ISLM curve in the background. So let's go ahead and get started talking about the Lucas Supply Function. If there's a specific section of this video that you would like to see and jump around to, use the timestamps below. When we talk about the setup for the Lucas Supply Function, there's a couple things that make it a little easier for us. The first being that the production function is very simple. There's no capital, so if I put in one unit of labor, I get one unit of output in return. We also assume that each household is making its own unique good that is different from everyone else's good produced by those different households. And each household can set the price for their good as they choose. When they set their prices, they do not know the overall price level, so they don't know what other households are charging for those goods. So that's something that's going to come into play as well. The setup formally for the Lucas supply function, we have a household problem, but we have two sides to the household problem. Because remember, the household is now producing and consuming, so we have a household consumption problem and we have a household production problem. Now on the consumption side, we're just going to be choosing the consumption of everything we buy, and we're choosing how much we want to work, how much we want to work on producing that good that we and only we make as that household. It's just going to be a pretty simple function. It's just consumption minus a CRRA disutility of labor, where you have a minus sign with one over gamma labor to the gamma. Now notice from before we said that y equals l, which is a substitution we're going to be making throughout this derivation. So it's something that I'm pointing out here. Now on the production side of this problem, what we have is we are choosing again the amount we want to work on producing that good. How much of that good we get to sell is going to be based on the relative price level. So this is our price level compared to the overall price level, which we don't know, times that y equals l. So I just made the substitution and called it l here instead of y. But again, we know in the background that our labor demand is equal to our output demand. Now, if we keep going, we can take a first order condition of the consumption part of this household problem, where notice that I've already done that substitution of L for Y. That just makes it easier so that I can take the first order condition with respect to one variable. I've done that here, and then I am going to take the natural log of this whole thing, which when I take the natural log of that whole thing, I'm going to get the natural log of output is 1 over gamma minus 1 times the pi minus p, or the natural log of pi minus the natural log of p. Notice that this is the difference between the overall price level and my price level. So this is what we're going to call a relative price. First, let's add in some demand into this equation. We've added in supply. We know what the household is going to supply, but not what's demanded of the household. Well, household demand is going to be overall output times some product specific factor zi times pi over p, this is a relative price again, raised to an elasticity of demand, I'll call that negative n. So again, we're taking some logs, and here is that same equation in log form. I also know as a fundamental identity that overall output is equal to m over p, which means I can take the log of that equation, get little y equals m minus p, and plug that in for y here. So I've done that to get to this blue equation, so now y equals m minus p plus zi, minus the elasticity of demand times pi minus p. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, what is p and what is y? Well, those are just going to be the averages of all the individual prices and all the individual outputs. So that's something that we're going to use. We also are going to say that, well, this is my price. This is the average price level. And then my price is just this plus some difference from the average. So here's the difference from the average. I'm going to call this difference from the average the relative price, or ri. If I keep going, I'm just going to rearrange that equation a little bit to say that the relative price is my price minus the overall price level, and plug that back in for yi from our first order condition. Now remember that I don't actually know this, because I don't know the overall price level in the economy, I'm guessing. So this is an expected value of ri, given the price that I set for my good. So I'm just going to change that equation a little bit to reflect that fact. And now, as you might guess, I've got to figure out what in the world this expected value of my relative price given my price is. We're going to say that both the price and the relative price are normally distributed. So I'm going to use statistics to get to this equation here. Notice that if all firms are the same, the expected relative price is zero because we should all be wanting to set the same relative price. 
So that drops out and I'm left with this lovely formula right here. Now I'm going to plug that back into our first order condition for y. I'm going to get this even messier equation. To make it a little easier to read and a little simpler, I'm going to call this whole thing b. So now I just have little y is equal to b times p minus the expected value of p. I also know that y equals m minus p again from before. So that means that m minus p must be equal to that whole thing. And all I'm going to do is solve this new equation here for p. So here I am going through the algebra and I'm going to get to this blue equation where p is equal to 1 over 1 plus b times the money supply plus b over 1 plus b times the expected value of the price level. Notice again, b is this lovely equation right here. So whenever you see b, you're thinking this. Now I can say that y is equal to m minus p. So here is that equation using the blue equation for p. I'm going to solve that and get that y equals b over 1 plus b times m minus b over 1 plus b times the expected value of the price level. Now we have this expected value of p in here, but what is the expected value of p? Can we simplify that any further? The answer is we can. not So what is the expected value of p? Well, it's the expected value of the equation for p, which is this guy. I also know that the expected value of p is equal to the expected value of m. So now once I have this, I can make that substitution and get to the fact that p equals 1 over bm plus b over 1 plus be of m. Keep going. I'm going to resolve this for p in terms of m now so that I can replace expected value of p with this guy, which is what all I did. So then I can solve that in for y and say that y is equal to m minus p, which is going to be this guy in the end. So now I have an equation for P, I have an equation for Y, and now I can find an equation for inflation because inflation is just PT minus PT minus one. So I am going to just substitute in the equation for PT minus the same equation for PT minus one and get to this nice equation in blue. Notice that I have an expectations augmented Phillips curve here because I have some expectations for the money supply today and expectations for the money supply yesterday. So the Lucas supply function allows us to get an expectations augmented Phillips curve from a micro based model. Now, if the money supply is a random walk, this is what a random walk would look like where we start at some value yesterday and we go to a new place. So we have some shock and some constant. Then the inflation is just going to be that constant plus the money shock yesterday times B over one plus B plus the money shock today times one over one plus B. So I know that's a lot of math. Feel free to comment if you found any of that confusing or if you would like to see something else related to the Lucas supply function. Otherwise, if this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.